Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 12th, and today we're going to take a look at this system that's moving into the Pacific Northwest. Take a brief look around the rest of the country, and we'll look into our extended forecast for the Pacific Northwest as well. But we had a pretty good sunny day here for most parts of western Washington and Oregon, and the high clouds have really come in quickly. Now we're getting some mid-level clouds and some verga moving over the area. Rain is starting to fall along the coastline and towards the Willamette Valley, and this is eventually going to spread over all areas of western Washington and Oregon and into the Cascades. High wind warning up for the Oregon coast. We'll go into that in a little bit of detail. You can still see sunny skies for eastern Washington and Oregon as these clouds will eventually overspread the entire region here in the next several hours. You can see the big low out here. It's pretty deep right now, but it is just now starting to fill and it'll eventually move and meander across the mouth of the Columbia River here near Astoria. And that's why the high wind warning is generally going to be on the south side of that where the best uh, pressure gradient will be. And we also have a chance for a little bit of thunderstorm activity across some of the coastal areas and in towards southwest Washington, maybe even Willamette Valley here through tonight. Not a big lightning threat, but there is a chance for a couple isolated uh, lightning strikes. So here's that coast on the east storm here. You can see it moving pretty quickly. It's some pretty good snows on the backside of this really cold air moving in. A pretty good swath of four to six inch snowfall totals. And of course, some locally higher snowfall totals. There is that snow you can see on the Doppler there. And here's towards Pacific Northwest. You can see this area is probably just evaporating as it falls for now, but the moist, more moist air will get in here and eventually saturate the column and eventually bring this precip down to the surface as we go into this evening and tonight. Now, checking out around the rest of the country, check out these freeze warnings for the southeast. Very cold air moving down in there. Some places are going to be down towards the teens, so they have freeze warnings going on there. You can see the winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories for areas of the northeast. And we have a hydraulic outlook here for western Washington, the Cascades, for some pretty heavy precipitation amounts coming up for the next few days, including an atmospheric river that's going to start on Monday. Winter weather advisories for the Oregon Cascades, southern Washington Cascades as well. And here's that closer look at that high wind warning for the Oregon coast. You see it ends right there at the Columbia River there. And we'll take a look at some of the timing on these winds here on these maps. So here's that low pressure. You notice how it's 986 about, about right now. And it starts to fill a bit and then just kind of meanders and weakens as it moves towards the mouth of the Columbia there almost perfectly. Bringing some pretty good onshore flow here into western Oregon. Some pretty good pressure gradients going across the coast there. Maybe some breezy conditions for, for the Willamette Valley, too. And you can see why that winter weather advisory extends into southern Washington there. And a lot of precip from this initial system will miss eastern Washington. The higher terrain of eastern Oregon will get some decent snowfall, though, out of this as the storm kind of tracks right over them. And going on to the future here, you can see this is the atmospheric river starting very late uh, tomorrow night, going on into Monday. And then you'll see some pretty good precipitation move across western Washington and Oregon as we go into Monday evening. And finally, that rain will start to taper off later on into Tuesday morning. So you can see this pretty good uh, band of moisture goes all the way down to California. And some pretty good snowfall totals up over the higher terrain of the Cascades with this too. And this is checking out the wind speeds here. You can see most of these winds right now paralleling the coast here. So this is probably not... Too incredibly windy on the Oregon coast just yet, but the eh, it starts to move in a bit there this evening. But you'll see the more powerful winds really plow on shore here as we go on into really early tomorrow morning. So if you're out vacation on the Oregon coast uh, and you hear the wind pick up, you'll know why as the storm system moves in here. You can see it generally leaves Washington without much wind at all in this scenario. And pretty gusty through the Lamette Valley coming up tomorrow morning too, as you can see. Higher terrain of Oregon, pretty windy on into eastern Oregon as well. So heads up for that if you're in the higher country out in eastern Oregon for into tomorrow. And then you can see that system move through on Monday. Uh, just breezy conditions generally. No big windstorm expected uh, in the immediate future after this one for the Oregon coast anyway. Now here's CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy. This is going on to this afternoon. You can see how fast this CAPE spreads in here. So this is where, generally where the areas of an isolated lightning strike can be expected as we go into this evening. And some CAPE does even build into the Puget Sound a little bit as we go past midnight, but that may be a little bit too late for a lightning strike. Uh, we did get some pretty good heating during the day today, but I don't know how much that's going to help out. Uh, again, very isolated chance for a uh, lightning strike today. And here is a composite reflectivity. 
handling the moisture pretty good. You can see the low pressure out here and this moisture starting to move in here and maybe some embedded heavier areas of precipitation, mainly Oregon it looks like actually for a chance of a lightning strike. And then you see that low pressure as it's weakening just kind of dive straight into Oregon here. And the precip keeps going on into Sunday night and there comes that atmospheric river coming on Tuesday night into Monday morning and continuing on the day through Monday. And then eventually overtakes a lot of the Pacific Northwest, even uh, down towards the Oregon coast, maybe all the way down towards the Bay Area with this system. Here's the HER, same thing as the NAM, shows that Cape moving in. Generally, may, mainly the coastal areas and some of the Willamette Valley in southwest Washington get in on that action as well. And here is the composite reflectivity according to the HER. You can see some of these heavier showers near the coastlines and maybe the coastal range of Oregon, Washington, and the Willamette Valley as this moves through here. And you can kind of see that low pressure system dive into Oregon. So here looking at what's coming up for this atmospheric river, you can see the system moving in now, generally not too terribly heavy precipitation knots for Washington, but Oregon's gonna get a little bit more as this system, like we saw, is gonna curl and mainly hit Oregon. Here comes the atmospheric river though on Monday, Tuesday, uh, sorry, Sunday night into Monday morning. You can see this really coming up through here. Lasts for about 36 hours. So uh, I think it's approaching a category two status probably with this event. You can see some of these areas all the way down towards the Bay Area getting a pretty good shot of this atmospheric river moving through. So they can really use it down in California. It doesn't look like a lot of precipitation south of the Bay Area, but the extended had some more hope for Southern California. And here again is that uh, category scale for atmospheric rivers. We're probably gonna be between 24 to 48 hours and probably just above the 500 with the IVT there. So just probably moderate category two. Mostly beneficial, probably not too hazardous this time around. Not like the last one. The last one was pretty powerful. As you know, we had a category four there and it brought, what, five inches of rain in a couple of days there for a lot of areas, even the lowlands. Now here's the European model. This is total precipitation and this is going out now into Sunday morning here. And you can see the precip really builds up here with the system curling right into Oregon there, especially the coastal range, some of the Cascades, Southern Washington and Oregon get some pretty good amounts. And here comes the atmospheric river through Monday. You can see it start to pile up for the coastal ranges and the Cascades, even Southern BC is gonna get a pretty good shot of precip out of this as we go on through into Tuesday. So some pretty impressive totals up over five inches in some areas for the higher terrains here. Now checking this out, this is the European, looking at the entire country now, you can see that Eastern, uh, East Coast snowstorm as it moves through here this evening, quickly gets out of there. Some really cold air behind it as we saw, given that deep freeze all the way down to the Southeast of the USA. Now here comes that atmospheric river on Monday, though, Sunday night into Monday, you can see it there really hammering the Northwest. Pretty chilly, some chilly air behind it. Not Nothing for lowland snow or anything like that, just some mountain snow and residual showers as we go through Wednesday. And then we'll have another system move through and yet another on into next weekend too. And we have to watch for some of the cyclone development on the southern periphery of this parent low here as we go into next week and, and early next week. Um, we saw that one run bring a pretty powerful windstorm through the area. I haven't seen anything like that since. So it's just something we're going to watch on into the future here. Here's the... Actually, let's go to the GFS. This is 10,000 feet, 700 millibars here. And you can see that that system kind of gets cut off there. Otherwise, it will probably would have just went right into Vancouver Island or north tip of Washington. Would have brought some pretty good winds across the area too. So dodged a bullet there with the windstorm. You can see some cyclogenesis over the Gulf of Alaska as this cold air is poured out and there's troughing is going to be going on over the Gulf of Alaska. And as we go into the future here a little bit, you'll see the cold air trying to spill out here, but the, it, it's really not making it too far towards the Pacific Northwest or not in a windstorm fashion anyway there as it just kind of continues the troughing but really doesn't get that super cold air down towards us for a major windstorm according to the gfs going into the future but this can change we'll watch this as this goes out you know as we get closer here in the next few days we'll keep watching that here is seattle you can see we're generally below average temperature supposed to remain that way up through the next week or two as we continue to get these systems through the area we're generally up into the low mid 50s by this time in march usually this time of year 
and check out the variability here in the precipitation as we get on into the extended. This goes through March 27th here. These are 24-hour totals for Seattle. You can see the systems as they roll through here. The mean and the control are in good agreement with that first system, that atmospheric river moving through on Monday into Tuesday morning. And then you'll see the control has a rainier period here next weekend, and the mean is a little bit less. And then it shows another area for some precipitation on into next week. But as you can see, there's plenty of precipitation chances coming up for the next two weeks. And we'll have to watch this atmospheric river coming through here. Some slight flooding concerns, but nothing like the last one we had a week and a half or two weeks ago now. And we'll just have to, if you're on the Oregon coast, enjoy those winds and, you know, stay safe down there. And I'll do another video tomorrow. We'll talk about uh, the extended and we'll check out that windstorm potential for the extended and see if anything has changed on that front. And until then, I will talk to you guys tomorrow and enjoy that rainfall coming in tonight after a nice sunny day.